Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? I'm Mannequin. Welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? It has been a very terrible day. <laughs> so, today was um, my scheduled planned cleaning day. I have been planning this cleaning day for a very long time, and I was really excited for cleaning day. Oh, and it's my birthday. Thank you very much. Ha uh, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, yes, I've been planning this day for a very long time because on my birthday, I think it's a great day. It's a great day to do some cleaning. Um, so I decided, you know what? I'm going to do some cleaning. And so I started cleaning and then I realized right as I, you know, was halfway through cleaning, they shut off my water because there was an emergency water leak in my building. And so, <laughs> so I have been clean. I have been washing my hands with Clorox wipes all day. <laughs> and as you can see, my hair is like freaking awful right now because I haven't had a chance to take a shower. In fact, I took a shower last night where the hot water wasn't working. So it was like, I was taking a shower in freaking like 40 degree water, like it's cold AF. <laughs> So apparently they're gonna turn it back on in an hour. I hope they do. Um, but until then, I am living without water for a little bit of time. My main source of hydration, indeed. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, it is my birthday, indeed. Um, I am older than six. Yep. That, that is, that's pretty much all the information you're getting. <laughs> Anyway, let's, you know what? Today we're doing some Phoenix Wright. And when we're doing Phoenix Wright, that obviously we're not really playing Phoenix Wright for Phoenix Wright. We're playing for one very beautiful person in the game. That's right, we're doing it for Gumshoe. So let's play some Phoenix Wright. You're an old man. We know. Wow, thanks, Kenjo. All right, let's play some Phoenix Wright, guys. I haven't done any, um... You're making a speed paint? Oh, thank you! I love speed paints! I haven't done any sound testing yet, so hopefully it'll just be smooth sailing with the sound test, but if not, I'll have to, you know, do some quick modifications. I have my PlayStation controller because I don't like clicking when I'm playing on this game. I haven't heard this song for a while. Uh. Mm. 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 Uh. How is the music? Is it okay? I turn it up a little bit. Okay, so... I was gonna do continue, but I realized this is Ace Attorney and then Justice for All. So, Ace Attorney... Justice for all. Trials and tribulations. I have not. Dang, it's been a while. I forgot. You know, remember, Phoenix Wright is the epitome of realistic courtroom procedure. So, obviously, this is going to be a cinch for me because I'm a legal expert. I have my mug here because all, um, um, all lawyers need to, like, drink coffee. They're like, hmm. Slam it down. Slam your hand on the desk. Bam! Objection. Point at whoever you're trying to point at. This is the end of a trilogy. Yeah, but there's also the quadrilogy, which and the quintilogy, um, which are like following a dude named Justice, and not right. I, I, I don't. I don't actually know. Like um, Apollo. I think Apollo Justice. Apollo Justice. Um, and then there's like another like psychology girl, Mimi Lock. Hello. Uh, actually, I haven't said hi to everyone, so let me just make sure what the what. Okay. Uh, hello, Randy. Hello, Kioma. Hello, Kemjo. Hello, Arcane. And hello, Mimi. I think I got everyone. Uh, heptology. 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 I don't. I don't know. Let's play Trials and Tribulations. This is off to a very promising start. Hello. Hello, my darling. Oh my good! Oh, who who is that girl behind her though? Oh my! Oh, this is this is. Mm, 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 I am. 
This is... Wait, what the heck? What are you doing, Phoenix? Who the heck... F Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. You're making the picture imperfect. C cover up Phoenix. Uh, just, just take your hand, cover up Phoenix's face, and that's like the perfect picture. Huff, huff, huff. Ah, how did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? Wait, is that Phoenix? <laughs> Oops! <laughs> that girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey! Hey man, it's none of your business! I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue seeing her, it's gonna be bad. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Shabra, stop it! Don't talk to her about her like that! Oh my god, did Phoenix kill someone? He's wearing pink. Shaw, man, it wasn't me! I didn't do it! <laughs> I didn't do it! Oh my god. Phoenix, you wuss. You're wearing a heart on your freaking chest. <laughs> Five Maya F Mia Faye's second trial. Oh, this is. Mm, 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 mm. It's cold out. Um, how cold? It's not too cold where I am, but I'm in California. <laughs> April 9th, 9.40 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Oh my god. We are inside Mia. Yes, I know what I said. <sighs> we are Mia? No, um, I mean, I, I know what I said. Um... Whew. It's finally time! Wait, wait. Mia's voice was like super sultry, so five years earlier she was probably a cutie pie. Whew, it's finally time! I'm kind of nerd. Oh my god, I'm gonna give her Maya's voice! Yes! Yes! Ooh, it's finally time! I'm kinda nervous! <laughs> Freaking Maya. I hate Maya. Come on, Mr. Dick! <laughs> It's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Oh, I know that throat clearing. <laughs> Hello? Oh, oh, Mr. Grossberg, good morning. Oh, Mia. Oh, I forgot his voice. Whatever, we're gonna improvise. It was five years ago, his voice has probably changed. Oh, oh. oh Mia, please calm yourself. You're going to get arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossbird. Look at me. I'm relaxed. <coughs> Let go of my lapels. Uh, you obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grossberg, am at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still? You surprised me. What with your earnest request last night? Oh, thank you so much, PR! Hello, happy anniversary of my existence. <sighs> I'm getting old. Thank you. I, I, I might as well be Marvin Grossberg. I'll just give Marvin Grossberg my voice because I'm as old as him now. <laughs> Do you have any quests for me? Uh, thank you so much, PR. Um, oh, man. Oh, 20, 20, that, that, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Thank, oh. Yeah. 
you know, no, you. Oh, thank. I hope you're, you know, you're having fun, and I don't know if you're going to be staying because I know you're afraid of spoilers, but thank you so much, and I'm glad that if you don't stay, I'm glad that you always, you know, hang out and enjoy the streams, and hopefully, you know, you can come by when spoilers aren't a problem. But thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're, you enjoy the streams. Um, yeah. And I hope you have a blessed day on my anniversary of my existence because you know every day should be a good day for you guys <laughs> let me handle the case you suddenly said quite forcefully too i found out yesterday about the case i mean what and you've already learned all the relevant facts well about that i i i, I me, me, me of, of course i have i think oh dear in any case don't let our client see you so nervous you see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there that's our client oh my freaking what the frick is this what bruh 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 you you Fe phoenix Phoenix, have you, have you, have you talked to Edgeworth yet about how much you love him? Are you flirting with another dude? <sighs> Come on, Phoenix. Don't be like that. <laughs> Shabra, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to give him a more bratty voice. Uh, good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, bruh! I just want to say, yeah! Like, I'll give it all I got! <laughs> you'll, you'll, it'll, it'll be fine! Yeah, yeah, no problem, man! <laughs> uh, what, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like, the Flying Brothers? Uh, people screw it up all the time. And, and yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for! My doc says, this way, I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he said. Wait till he finds out about COVID. Right, uh, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. No, 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 you, you never promise that as a defense attorney. He's, <laughs> let, let, Shabra, let go of my shirt, yeah. Th that's right. He's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. That's why you did those 100 push-ups last night. My name is Mia Fey. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly, I never thought I'd set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and, well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win! You're watching the stream, Are You Smart Yet? Um, well, only if you can save Phoenix. And for my client, and for myself! Shabra! <laughs> Shabra! April 11th. 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Can I appreciate how punctual they are? They always start literally exactly at 10 a.m., not 10.02, not 10.03, not 10 o'clock plus a few minutes to silence the gallery. It's like, no, exactly at 10 a.m. Oh, I don't know the plaintiff, or not the plaintiff, the, the prosecutor. Um, Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. Judge! Judge, I missed you! Ah, oh, Judge, give me a hug. Let me kiss that beard. Mwah! Oh, Judge! Judge, it's been so long! The defense is ready, Your Honor. Bruh! Bro, Winston has a mullet! Oh! Oh! Yo! The prosecutor! 
potion is ready, Your Honor! The defense today is... Miss... 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 Mia Fey, was it? Y yes Your Honor, is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be leading the defense. Yeah, yeah, well, um, you see, I, um, Mr. Grossberg had a, um, bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there right next to you? Yeah, well, I, uh, oh my god, look at her bangs. Dang, the, my, my girl, my girl had, like, one eye edgy bang. Ooh, 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 oh my good, mm. Mm. Girl, why are you dressed like that? You are going to get kicked out of court, and when you get kicked out of court, you can come with me to my bedroom, and then we can we can have a case there. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes. Um. Well. You're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. Look at my fabulous, bouncy hair. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Oh, I bet the stream right now would love to babysit that lawyer for a completely different reason. What? What? Oh, oh, hello, hello. How am I, how am I going to get through this case? How, it, it, it's, it's literally not possible for me. Don't worry, little girl, it'll all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred at the campus of Ivy University. Ivy Universe. Oh, the puns don't get better, do they? The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth unit. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Doug Swallow. You, you, can't, you, you can't. You can't keep doing this, Phoenix, right? You are going to kill me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo of the scene taken at the crime. Students discovered a dead body! And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway, they caught the police. They tackled him. They sat on him for three hours. Ah, uh, the defendant kept saying something like, You're not Edgeworth! You don't get to sit on me! But the students didn't understand. Then the police came and they put him in handcuffs. And then he said, Hey, only Edgeworth's allowed to put me in handcuffs, and nobody really understood what he meant. Hmm. That certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious. Very well. The court accepts the photo into the record as evidence. It reminds you of Matt Ungar. Shabra! Shabra! <laughs> Freaking Matt Ungar. <laughs> All right, the crime took place behind an IVU building. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> we don't talk about Matt Ungar. Eh, eh, eh. Your reputation for sagacity is well earned, your honor. The truth is this victim died a rather unusual death. An, an unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. That's literally not my job. That's literally not my job. Um, no, no, proceed with your opening statement. A simple question. I thought I might 
literally said you object. 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 I am a genteel man, if you will. This is completely against court procedure. What are you doing? Object! Object! Uh, 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 what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Objection! Objection! Oh, per oh, uh. Melvin Gross, oh, perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause, go on. Gr Grossberg, Grossberg, tell her to object. This is not her job. Grossberg, you're the, her mentor. You're her mentor. Object, objection, objection. Lisa, you know at least this much. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Oh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act. What? Oh, oh God, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you for that information. Now I am imagining Grossberg with hemorrhoids. This is the... No, see here. Oh, Marvin Grossberg. Oh, let, let me let me get his book. Marvin Grossberg. Now see here. The details of the case are filed under court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? I think I accidentally opened the court record. Yep. <laughs> Read. Fatal electric shock. Oh, ah, ah, the court record. I think I could see that by pressing RB and definitely not tab because I'm playing with a controller. All of the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Y yes, sir, I'll, I'll do just that. I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just press right button. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the objection? Objection. Objection. Um, hypothermia. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocute. Yes, that is what a fatal electric shock would imply. Uh, I, you know, just going backwards, she said a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. I wonder if in Japanese, some of the things are written in like English. And so they have to explain things, and that's why she says a fatal electric shock, in other words, electrocution. Maybe the word electrocution was written in um, English, and so it's actually harder for Japanese players. I don't know. I don't know, but I always found it really interesting that they're like, oh, um, it is a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. It's like, thank, thank you for the definition. <laughs> but how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some kind of new, super powerful stun gun? Perhaps I should get one from Von Karma. The answer to that will be crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there's one more final issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad b blood what do you mean? Oopsie! I'm terribly sorry! You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it! Literally, no, no, you should be the one presenting. This is, this is, this is your opening statement! I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this! No, it's not my job to prove my client guilty! I literally should not be, I literally don't have to do this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you, oh, Grossberg. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you catch my drift. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, 
evidence? Do we use that here? I thought we just present whatever we feel like presenting. Uh, no, no need to get worked up all over this. Oh, no need to get worked up all over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Do we have the... Oh my god! Hello, my darling Dahlia Hawthorne, Phoenix Wright's girl... GIRLFRIEND! Okay, okay. L look at, look at Phoenix. Look at, how, how did this, how did this relationship happen? Phoenix? Da da Dahlia, what the frick are you doing with your life? What the frick? What the frick? Okay, okay. I am calling it right now. The only, the only possible way Dahlia is with freaking, I mean, I mean, Doug, I, under, I understand if um, Dahlia was dating Doug, right? That their exes dated the victim, Doug Swallow. I mean, Doug, Doug, he, he kind of a baddie, right? So Doug, I completely understand, right? Doug and Dahlia, oh, 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 that, 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 oh, oh, that's a, that's one beautiful couple, but Phoenix, Phoenix. Okay, the only possible way Dahlia is with Phoenix is okay. Okay, okay, okay I, I have to find a way to justify this. Okay, it's because Phoenix has a good personality. We know he has a crap personality. Um, uh, Phoenix is trying to make Edgeworth jealous. No, he, he, he hasn't seen Edgeworth yet. Um, I, I can do this. I can do this. Um, Doug is a mass murder. No. Uh, um, uh, um, Phoenix is. Phoenix is on cafeteria duty and he gives out the best meatloaf? Um, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> like there's gotta be a way. Okay, 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 okay. This is what happened. Phoenix works at the cafeteria and he makes the best meatloaf. And Doug is a pharmacy student, right? So Dahlia was all like, oh, uh, I have an idea. Um, I'm going to... Okay, okay, okay. New theory, new theory, new theory. No one is that beautiful and not completely insane. Okay, okay, so, okay, that new theory, new theory. Dahlia Hawthorne is a freaking serial killer and um, she was... She's using Phoenix to murder people! That's it! That's it! Oh! 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 I have the entire case! Okay, 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 okay. Um, okay, so Doug Swallow was in his lab one day and he was all like, hmm, I'm gonna make some delicious drugs. And so he was cooking up some drugs and then Dahlia was all like, ooh, those are some drugs. Ooh, I better kill him so I can get high tonight. So sure, serial killer murderer tendencies are like, ha ha ha, I'm gonna kill him. Phoenix, 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 stand right here. Stand right here. Um, um, Dahlia, uh, Dahlia, did you kill this man? No, but please stand right here. I'm gonna go run to the bathroom. Uh, and, um, you just, you just, oh, wait, oh, wait, stand right there. Oh, wait, hold this cable in your hand. It's the, it's, it's, it's a cord. It's like, uh, why would I want to hold an electric cable in my hand next to a dead body? I don't know. Just trust me on this. I'm going to go out. Okay. I love you, Dahlia. Okay. That's the entire case. That's the case. That's the case. I'm calling it right here. It's over. I solved the case. It's over. Okay. We got this. Find the oh, find the evidence you need, and then shove it in old Greybeard's face. Ah, uh, yes, sir, into old Greybeard's face. 
Uh, Mr. Grossberg? Try to set a better example for the young lady. Uh, Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. Oh, you can toggle between them. Uh, profiles and evidence, so be sure to go over it all. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix and the victim? Okay, but, okay, let's just be completely honest here. She's obviously the murderer. Right? Because she's the only one that's relevant besides Phoenix. It's obviously her. <laughs> that's how the first case always goes. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have you seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. How? 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 How the frick? How? But up until eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Okay, I completely understand that. I mean, look at the look at. Oh man, he a baddie. Mm. Clearly, she has some part to play in this story. Hmm. You see, see, you simp for the crazy women. But Mia's not crazy. Oh, he's done it again. Before the cross examination starts, he's always got the ju he's already got the judge thinking how he like how like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. Um. Objection. Objection. Um. Have have we agreed to this? Um. The, the prosecution cannot call the defense to plead against himself if he doesn't want to. Ob objection? Object objection? Objection! Objection! Uh, we, uh, what, what you, I, um, what, uh, object, object. He, he doesn't have to testify against himself. He literally doesn't have to testify against himself. What, the defendant himself? Well, Miss Fa OBJECT! IT'S NOT FINE! OBJECT! <sighs> the defense has no objection. <laughs> Very well. This is the worst. This is the worst. I am finding out that my darling, the woman I love, is a complete idiot. The court calls Mr. Phoenix right to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, Shabra, yeah. My name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, uh, suspect. Yeah, that sounds cool. No, 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 no. Uh, he means what you did before you were arrested. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are suspected in the death of your fellow student, Doug Swan, but, 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 but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling. <laughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his cold to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Very well then, Mr. Wright. No, 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 no. Phoenix, Phoenix. No, 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 no. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away! A shabra! Right away, Your Honor! The victim and I. Oh boy, this is gonna be awful. Uh, I... Shabra, I admit that I was there! Shakabra! But I'm not a killer! All I did was find his body! I, like, hardly knew the guy! I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe! Shabra! 
British wannabe. Mmm, I see. You hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. Whew. It looks like the judge understands. Mm -hmm. You're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten about one small thing, young lady. And that would be? The witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? No, he's not British. He's a British wannabe. That's right. It is the defense's duty to carry out the cross exam. Easy. No further questions. Done. Done. We have no. We have no questions for the witness, Your Honor. The purpose is to determine if a witness testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions. If a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, in court all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, it is that is your duty, you see. What what does he mean like that? Is he saying the testimony just now that there was a lie? A, a contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination, if you would please, Miss Fay. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? No, no further questions, Your Honor. No, no further questions, Your Honor. R what? Why do I have to go through this? Hold on a second. I'm gonna save real quick. Wait. Why do I have to do this? No further questions. We have no questions for the witness, Your Honor. Why would I try to break down his testimony? Oh, you admit you were there? Oh, well, um, have you seen my, um, lawyer's badge? Does this evidence establish that the defendant is lying? Don't ask me. You're the one who's supposed to know. Uh, sorry. This is kind of still new to me. Well, I've got something new for you, too. A new penalty. Oh, no. That, that wasn't it? Oh, I know. He's not a killer. Well, um, um, maybe, maybe my lawyer's badge should show that this is a problem. Oh, gee! Well, what are you making a fuss for? Think before you speak, young lady. Oh, uh, what? Oh, oh no! Um, well, it looks like there was no contradiction there. Uh, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find the bot. Oh, um, you see, I'm a lawyer? Uh, uh. Your Honor, what do you think of the witness's statement? Hmm. I don't really see any problem. Exactly! You don't see any problem. There's clearly not a problem here. Actually, I don't- Exactly! There's no problem! Well, what are you making a fuss for? That's- that's right. Oh, oh, how- oh, that- 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 oh, I guess- I guess there's no, um, there's no contradiction there. You, you, your Honor, what do you think of the witness's statement? Ugh. Okay, yes, exactly. There's no contradiction in this testimony. Um, 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 the, 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 the defense has no further questions. That's enough! The court sees to- See, exactly! Good! Good! The court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any more need for any more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the fact. Great! Good! Good! This court finds the defendant, Phoenix Wright- What?! Against him. 
not a single piece of evidence. The only person who has testified is literal. The only person who has testified literally said, oh, I don't know who that is. And no, but, that, but how? Literally, how? Literally, how is he guilty? There is literally nothing in there. Literally how? Literally all Phoenix did was say, I don't know the guy. And, and, and th there was no evidence presented. And literally he just said, oh, I don't know the guy. That's, is that, that all the evidence that you need to, co to make someone guilty? <sighs> I hate this. I hate this. I hate, why am I playing this game? I need to turn on the air conditioner. I am so sweaty right now. I am, I am so freaking so how literally how is he guilty <sighs> okay Let's actually, let's actually take apart a testimony that helps us, because that's apparently what you do as a defense attorney. Okay, how do you know he's a British wannabe? <laughs> Mr. Wright, you stated in your following testimony, I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Um, that's right! I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that his victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, no, no it, it, it wasn't me, Shabra! I'm not a killer! Mr. Wright? I will give you an opportunity to revise your statement. I mean, you don't have to know someone to know that he's like a piece of crap. How is it you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Because he was always talking about the queen and he was always going on, oh, fish and chips and oh, oh, would you like a spot of beverage, governor? Oh, well, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Wait, so he's a British wannabe because he wears the flag? Oh my god. <laughs> Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean? Yeah, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That, that's that's why I figured he must love British stuff. It's true. Cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. Objection, Phoenix. No one likes British stuff. Ah, oh, you got me. I'm so sorry. I'm s Union Jack fellow. I cannot even. The Union Jack is the name of the United King's flag! Oh, I see. You mean like, the stars and strips, right? As usual, your insight astounds me, your honor! <laughs> what, did he hold his small teacup and index finger <laughs> and his pinky finger out? Oh, tea with the queen today. Oh, very good, governor! <laughs> Something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Me? Uh, me? Uh, oh, Marvin Grossberg? Me? Uh, there is a contradiction here. Mr. Grossberg, quickly now, show that boy you mean business with evidence I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, you think you can manage on your own? Uh, I need some help, sir. 
year ago, it was in a courtroom like this. I can do this. I can handle myself. You mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew, Mia. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always push him to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to make a contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Okay, Mia. One more time. From the very beginning of this testimony, why are we breaking down his testimony? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Oh, whoops. Uh, I can't look. Oh, sorry. 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 Go, 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 go. Okay. There. Body. I need the guy. He was always wearing around with a Union Jack. Okay. A to check. I might press the wrong button, so I'm being very careful because I'm playing on a uh, PlayStation controller and this is using Xbox controls. A Union Jack. There's no Union Jack on his jacket. Okay. He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on his. Okay. Uh, fourth year pharmacology. Doug Swallow, Ivy League, third year student, he yeah, currently has a hold, my superior. You know, sometimes the sometimes the photos are kind of questionable because we can't really see the Union Jack, right? Wait, on the back of his shirt, he's wearing a coat. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Fay, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing! I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. I'm trying to make you look guilty because apparently that's a defense attorney's job! But if that was really the case, you wouldn't know that, would you? You have no idea what he was wearing underneath that jacket at all! Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me! It hurts my feelings. Oh, please forgive me! <laughs> Yeah, you've made our client cry. Let him. That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyway. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> That's an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defense's lie. The defendant's lies for me. Are we? Are we for real right now? Are we for real? I literally, I, 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 what, but you, I, I literally decided to fu to fudge my entire, my entire cross-examination just so Phoenix can walk off and this, um, and this testimony could stand. And they're like, no, it's guilty. So I proved him wrong. And now Payne's like, ha ha, you got the line, what the frick? It's quite clear this man simply did not stumble across the scene of the crime! Uh-uh. Uh-oh. Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? Objection! Relevance! I, uh... Um, yeah, yeah. I took some, but... Was the medicine you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Kill? Objection! Object! Object to this line of questioning! Yeah, that's right! It kills cold good! Hey, wait a sec. Sha, brah! How do you know I'm a big fan of cold killer? How is he a fan of a cold medicine? This, uh, this is, it's, but, yeah. I forgot. I forgot how much Phoenix Wright infuriates me. <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does it have anything to do with the- Oh, get oh, the oh, chat! Mr. Wright! 
Shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? With the victim. Your Honor, I'd like you to take another photo, look at another photo from the crime scene. Of course. Of course. What? In the victim's hand, it's... Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna take this carefully. It's in his left hand, specifically. It's Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. I mean, that's actually a good defense. Um. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. Was the victim right-handed or left? I don't think that matters in this case. All that matters was he was holding it. There's no doubt to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints. I swear to freaking God. You know, he could have literally, he could have literally just presented this at the very beginning in his opening statement. The right hand is the hand you hold chopstick. You don't, you can shut up, Randy. What? Since his murder is in 10, Mr. Swallow must have picked up. <laughs> oh, cheerio and all that. He's about to kill me. I better make sure he cannot solve his cold problems. <laughs> that was how the entire murder went down. Oh, cheerio, Pip Pip. Oh, how dare you try to murder me. I'll make sure you have that cold for another three days. <laughs> It was dropped by Mr. Wright, and he hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so has only been to identify the killer as Phoenix Wright. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and this bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Okay, but you know, it, it's nice to note that it was in his left hand. Um, perhaps... I don't know, perhaps there might be something, um, you know, maybe finger Doug Swallow's fingerprints are somewhere, or, um, maybe we want to claim that Doug was holding something, or so on and so forth. We'll just keep that in mind. Gold Killer X. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yeah, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, you have some kind of explanation for all this. Uh, uh, this is really bad. If only I hadn't cross-examined the witness for the prosecution. Oh, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Why are you giving me that information, Mr. Grossmer? <laughs> Why can't I be Phoenix and staring at Mia instead? <laughs> Emphasis on the gross. Thank you very much. Yeah, sha, brah. The truth is, like, sha, he, he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we, like, agreed to, like, totally meet behind, like, the bu building at 245. We talked for a bit, and then around three, we, like, split up, brah. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, by the way. It's awesome. It kills colds, man. But I lost a bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Who were you eating lunch with? Mr. Wright, that is a completely different testimony than the one you gave previously. I sneezed. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. What time did the clock stop? About 3.05. So it, it's reasonable. Yeah, 
about three or five. I made sure to check that as well. Um. Hmm. Miss Faye, your cross examination. Oh please, Mr. Wright, don't tell me any more lies. I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department. I know that the general strategy is to, you know, present, like, um, just press everything for information, but I'm a, a believer that, you know, you should try to immerse yourself. So lawyers don't like press everything like, hi there, I'm Phoenix, objection, how do you know that? It's like, I wouldn't do that. I like, I try to go after the most important information and I, and I like to challenge myself to see if I can find it. Um, pharmacology department, we meet to be at 245. We split up around three, then later when I went back, I found him lying there. And been taking cold killer eggs for two to three days. I lost my bottle. Who are you eating with? <laughs> On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. Of course. Of course. Of course. Is she actually, did, how, I want, I'm curious how accurate my theory is that this girl is a serial killer and is using Phoenix to commit murder. <laughs> um, I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. They're usually poisoned, but for some reason I'm a mute. <laughs> Her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> oh God. Yow! Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Yeah, I feel like hurting someone after seeing that face too. To be honest. Well, Mia? Uh, I don't know. I can't seem to be- that's because we literally asked one question, Mia. The boy isn't exactly what I call a natural born liar, you know. But still, we can't have him continue to spout nonsense. I know, but what can I do? Well, I'm certain he must be hiding something. Information. Right now, it's information we need more than anything else. The truth is, he called me. He was in the farm department. We talked, we split up, found him lying there. Uh, oh wait, tell me about how you split up. So, what were you talking about? Close enough. Y you know, <laughs> that maybe we should hang out again sometime. I can't, Phoenix. Are you serious? Are you serious? You can't be that bad of a liar. Hang out. Hang out again sometime. Phoenix, no one wants to hang out with you. No, no. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah! And we were both there right on time. You said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve drugs. Everyone called him the druggie of IVU. Uh, druggie, I, I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltages. Oh, how fascinating. Sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. Have you ever heard of a man named Walter White? He kind of looks like me. Um, ask him about... A little bit more about the timing. So are you absolutely certain that you met at 245? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah! Those pharmacology guys are always whip in their lab whipping something up. 
Well, it looks like he's right about the time. Alright, let's ask a little bit more about the other thing. About the pharmacology department itself. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure! I don't know that much about it, though. A little earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right! They sure look dangerous! Oh man, if somebody fell into those, they'd totally die from electric shot. I mean, uh, um, yeah? They use non-standard voltages, so there are high voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables? Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met approximately at his time of death, and the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here. Okay, Frank, I'm Phoenix. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> Why, what do you mean? I'm the funniest guy in the world! <laughs> I knew it was too much to work for a little girl. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is... Ah, you are correct, Your Honor. So, how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I can come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Sure. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that if we piece everything together we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive! <laughs> Quite a brass statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you understands the most basic rules of court, yes? Let's be real here. If I don't establish it, pain will. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence! Hm. Of course I know that. Actually, I'd totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Fay, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Is it this one? It is this one. Really? Do they really have to ask that question? As for the cause of death, I'd say the picture captures it quite well. Why are we establishing the cause of death for the prosecution? What? But there is nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon. How? How are you? How is everyone in this game so dumb? How? How is this possible? I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this to me. I swear to God. It's the umbrella! It's the umbrella, sir! Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... What is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines and the pharmacology students... The pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. That's right, they are high all the time. Therefore, my client couldn't have done the murder! Yes! And because of that, there are special high voltage electrical cables strung up everywhere. So the high voltage cable? Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, 
I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as the murder weapon was... The Defendant! Hmm. That is suddenly true. Yeah, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that... We'll establish Mr. Wright as the murderer! You do? Well, where is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. I actually did not know that. Thank you, Payne. I actually learned something today. Y you mean... Yes. It was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The paw print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable! Order. That's enough! I think we can conclude there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Oh, stick a fork in us, we're done! M Mr. Grossberg? My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. Does he use his hemorrhoids as like a fortune telling tool? Because that's, 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 that, that's innovative. Uh, I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. After all, I hadn't played the other two games. No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor. At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Fay? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? Exclamation point. You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Japanifornia. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I, I... I can't say it. If I told you what really happened, I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me, even though I haven't heard what you're about to say, and this could probably be disastrous. Miss Faye, you're kind of cute. No matter what you have to say, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. We have already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mr. Wright, I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright! There's no need for further- <laughs> I... I did it. I admit it! I pushed him! Oh, this is Phoenix. I admit it! I pushed him! It's my fault. It's my fault that Doug Swallow's dead! That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore! Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh hey, that's none of your business! I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, I'll be bad news. Oh, governor, you're lying. Oh, just listen to me, sire. Oh, you, there is something you need to know about that girl. Oh, ch 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 cheerio. Stop it! Don't talk British like that. You just said 
Was that the truth? Yeah, I, I'm afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure! Well, as things currently stand, you are literally the murderer. Please! Please give me one more chance to explain! This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth! It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I'll... I'll believe in you! Oh, um... Thank... You? I still can't believe he pushed the victim for being British. He's a wannabe! Oh, it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. How does this geezer know the Harlem Shake? You know, the Harlem Shake. Before the Harlem Shake was a YouTube trend, it was a dance a long time ago. How do you not know the Harlem Shake? That guy, he was talking about bad about Dolly in a horrible British accent. I lost my temper when he said Pip Pip Cheerio and it gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. Hey, how's it going, Bowser? Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that as they say, is that a simple explanation? Indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, but when I pushed him, there wasn't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed. That's true. Even a complete, utter idiot who, after two games, still doesn't know the difference between an objection and pressing for evidence. He couldn't miss that. Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Y yes Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that I'll, that will prove it. Also, I'm very cute, which is why I'm going to win. Yeah, Dolly, I lost my temperature and I lost my temperature. I lost my temper and what's the loud noise? Tell me what the loud noise is. How's it going, Ants Man? A loud noise? And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap, bro. Like, oh, dang. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what it was. <laughs> Clearly, your honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. I mean, wouldn't that sound last longer than a snap? Objection. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. Well, it doesn't hurt to ask for more. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. Try to remember what it was. Uh, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Oh, could it have been? Don't say it could it have been, just say what it was. Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. Okay. One Direction is way better than the Beatles! Push, push, push! He fell right on top of it and it broke! That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella. And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was 
Plast it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail. Kind of like the owner. <laughs> then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked. Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important just now? Uh, well, yes, it is very important, actually. This is it, Mia. This new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's but I wouldn't go that far, but just say it's important. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha! Ah, how perfectly fitting! Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to the testimony. Uh, he fell down on top of his umbrella. <laughs> Kemjo says, I have short-term memory loss, and even I remember the umbrella wasn't under duck. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right! The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he pushed the defendant, Mr. Swallow was alive. No! Order! The victim. He moved? Mr. Payne! The umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present it as evidence immediately. Owned by the victim. Found broken near an electrical pole at the scene of the crime. Oh, he has a clear umbrella. Oh, that is like, oh, like only tools have like clear umbrellas. <laughs> Phoenix is still guilty of assault, though. I mean, fair. Although, nobody can report that crime anymore. Uh, oh, wait, but he could just confess to it. Wait, assault is criminal, right? So, which means it would be the state prosecuting him, which means he can still go to trial for that. Which means... Let's not think, let's not think too hard about that. <laughs> but the umbrella could have simply been blown there! According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. Uh, but I, I, um... I know this matters of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. If only I said that at the beginning of the trial, then I wouldn't have given him a guilty verdict. No! I must say, I find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown into the prosecutor's case by the defense by the defendant's testimony. Get it? I said blown because he mentioned wind. Now I'm just torturing myself. A victim fell under the brow. There was a loud sound. Well done, Mia. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about menacingly? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. I was foolish to think I could establish a guilt through cross-examination alone. You were literally trying to establish guilt through me. And I literally didn't have to do that. I literally could have said it's your job. It is literally your job to establish guilt. Why did you not bring in Gumshoe? I love Gumshoe. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have 
another witness. Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible! Incontrovertible? Will be the truth? Just say, will be the truth. Well, who is this witness? Somebody get me a dictionary. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly, Dolly, Lee, Lee. I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover. Actually, we haven't gone that far. Uh, we held hands once, though. Although it was... Oh, man, that was so... Oh, God. I'm sorry, I might have sexually harassed her. Uh, uh, I need to report myself. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious! Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. All right, I think it is time for me to take a quick bathroom break and see if my water is back on. Hey, Lana, you came for the perfect stream. It is 5.30. The people said the water would be back on at five. For those of you who are about to ask, no, I didn't wash my hands. I am literally going to wash my hands with a Clorox wipe because I have no water. Hey, how's it going, BLK3? Makoto, uh, Makoto Naegi. Oh, no, that's not Makoto Naegi. I, th I thought you were Makoto Naegi. 
カムカラカムカライズクイズル。Oh, hello, BLK3. <laughs> How are you guys doing today?、Um, I am very thirsty.、Um, and not just because this trial is all about Mia Fey.、Um, I actually don't have water right now. <laughs> Turnabout wipes. Yes, indeed. All his testimonies hurt himself more than safe. Yeah, pretty much. All right, let's continue. April 11th, 11 52 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three.、Uh, Answer Man asks, What the hell is an ignoramus? An ignoramus, it's essentially a very extremely stupid person. Um, Miss Faye, I'm sorry about what happened back there. Shabra, I, I, I like, uh, y y like, y a h It's alright. At least you told the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. How much do I pay? Well, apparently, at this point in time, I might as well just be a public defender. Because I take on any case. L like, let's be real here. Phoenix Wright literally takes on anyone. Who begs him to take him on? So he's, he's literally just a public defender. And like half the times he doesn't even get paid. It's like, how, does, how is he not the richest person in the world? He's taken on a case, like so many high profile cases. The top prosecutor in, the, in all of Japan, California, he defended. Like Will Powers, the freaking like, billionaire actor, freaking billionaire magician, the, 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 the magician. He defended one of the highest profile cases, the, the, the murder of, um, the murder of, um, what is it?、Um, red White. He took on. It's like, how is he not freaking rolling in dough? I swear to God. <coughs> This is a good game in the series. Everyone says it's the best. Really? Okay, I'm really excited. Maximilian Pegasus. <laughs> yes, I remember Max. Uh, what is it? And his like 16 year old lover? Like, what the frick was that about? Oh my god, Ben! Oh my god, Ben was 32 and he was gonna confess to the 16 year old. Oh, oh no! Oh frickin' Ben! Oh no, I just remembered Ben! Oh. It's alright, Mr. Wright. One day, about six years from now, You're gonna to have to deal with a 32 year old man who was in love with a 16 year old. Until then, at least he told us the truth. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then. Shabra! How's it going, Four? You're holding a Christmas party! Happy Christmas party!、Um, thanks for coming by and saying hi. Relax, my boy! Oh, you can't be serious after hiding such important fact! My name is Marvin Grossberg. But the next witness is my dolly, right? She is testifying against you. I swear to God. Oh, wait, so first, Mia just does the prosecution's job, and now. Ugh, I swear to God. I just know she's gonna save me. Why do you think that? What do you mean? She's the love of my life, that's why. She is not the love of your life! She is way too good for you! Phoenix! Phoenix! You think this can get with that? Phoenix, open your eyes! She is using you for her serial killer purposes! I swear to God! Phoenix, she is like, she is going to. She, 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 not only did she kill Doug, she probably killed. um... She, she killed. um... She probably killed her mom and her dad, and she probably killed her sister, and she probably, like, ate their corpses. It's like, there's no way this girl is innocent. Look at her! Look at her! Hey, Nahun. Hey, how's it going, Hotfire? I wonder how he keeps getting his suit clean if you don't get paid. I know, right? Really? Um, the love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Also, um, a young boy named Miles Edge. How do you know about Miles Edgeworth? Are you. Are you sure Dahlia is the love of your life? Well, um, I mean, uh, 
Edgeworth and I were friends, and and we may have kissed once, but that was in high school, and it didn't count, okay? He's not the love of my life. Dolly is the love of my life. Even though I really like Edgeworth, and I wish he would just talk to me and return all my phone, but I love Dahlia! Uh, a uh, what? What? Um, sure, sure, no problem. Dolly and I, we first met about eight months ago right here in this very courtroom. Why was she, um, why, why was she at the courthouse? Okay, even more. How's it going, Nahun? Hello, um, Nahun Gonzalez. Um, how, why was she, oh, okay, even more evidence. She was literally coming here to burn evidence in like her 17th murder trial. That is, that's it, that's it. She is a monster. Um, actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer. On the side. <laughs> How do you study to be a lawyer on the side? Frickin' goddamn, no wonder you're such a crappy lawyer, Phoenix. Um, what happened? Um, we cross-examined Phoenix for some reason and we, broke down his testimony, and we established that Phoenix pushed Doug, Swallow, and now Dolly is about to testify. One day, she and I bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, and here, take a look at this. She gave me, she gave this to me on the day we met as a symbol of our love. She uses that to mark her victims, Phoenix. No, no, you, Phoenix, Phoenix, no, no, that is a tracking device. She is going to use that to find you. Oh my God, Phoenix, you are so doomed. She had been wearing it around her neck the, that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to, oh, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with my memories of darling little Dolly. This darling little bottle is filled with the blood of all her exes. It's certainly a little bottle. It's certainly a little bottle, all right. It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to show my happiness with the whole world. Dahlia's present. He shows it to everyone. How is it possible that Phoenix is a bigger simp than me? This is not possible. I am literally at hospitalizing level simps. Like I have to go to the hospital like three times a week j just to deal with how much I simp. How is this possible? <coughs> um, anyway, so after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she's always saying the same thing to me. Please give it, please give it back to me now. What a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. By the way, oh, by the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, that wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Uh, yeah, it was, but how did you know? Edgeworth told me, what? What? Edgeworth saw that? Oh no, uh, um, um, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not what you think, Edgeworth. Oh God, I have to call him. That's why he hasn't been returning any of my calls. And, um, this happened on August 27th, right here in this courtroom. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the court, murder. What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you took such a keen interest in this case. 
You believe there is some connection between those two cases, am I correct? An article from Ben, eight months ago. Very little information. <clears throat> Murder in the courthouse? Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. One year ago, she was 19. Which makes her 20. And she was found innocent? Or not guilty? She was found not guilty. What happened in that case? I need to finish this myself. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look down in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank, thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Don't worry, me and my hemorrhoids are right here for you. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Gross. Well, it looks like recess is about over. We better get moving. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Especially since I couldn't go to the bathroom because there's no water running in my apartment right now. Wait, that was to be continued? I guess the stream's over. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll probably be doing that more on the first, on the next several trials, because I know the next trials will be a lot longer, but this is the tutorial trial. We can't leave on this. Also, I definitely haven't game over yet because I was so pissed at the freaking um, the freaking freaking court proceedings that I purposefully threw the trial just to see if the court proceedings work, and apparently they don't because apparently you can declare Phoenix guilty on absolutely zero evidence. <sighs> I didn't purposefully throw the trial just to see if the court if the court was competent. Twelve thirteen p.m. Court. Uh, district court, courtroom number two. Weren't we in courtroom number three? Why did we change courtrooms? Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Oh, hello, darling. Never mind, I hate her. I hate her. What's with this stiff silent? Um, oh, trust me, trust me. <laughs> Something is stiff, and it's definitely not the silence. Oh, 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 oh. I am, I am so sorry. I apologize. What? In my long career as a judge. I have been deceived by many witnesses. It is my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he actually said that. Oh, uh, um, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie, there's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel. Judge! I love how they look straight at me when they say, How? How are you comparing Dahlia Hawthorne to frickin' Mia Fey? Oh my god, Mia Fey. Mm -mm. Do not worry. Oh, mm -mwah. My girl Mia Fey, you are way better than that Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, ooh, ooh. If I had um if I had an option on who I wanted to chain in my basement, I wait what? What? 
what? Um, I would love and respect Mia Fey for the rest of my life. Um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Oh, not at all! Oh, it was nothing! If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? Uh, my name is Dahlia Hawthorne. And I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. She is a literature major. No wonder I hate her. <laughs> The honor is all mine! No, the honor is all mine! Well, we know whose milkshake breaks all the boys to the yard! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. say whatever's on your mind. I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I can see why you say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, all right. <laughs> it only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. How's it going, Dumball? Let's hear what you you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. I'd been planning to go back to Feeny's place after class was over. Feeny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly, Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeny noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. Young lady, as old as I am, even I can call recall how hot the flames of passion can burn. Nevertheless, <clears throat> it's my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But, but, I would never... That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. You haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. <laughs> What's this? So you two are acquainted? Oh, this is the best news I have heard in a very long time. Oh, you two are friends. Oh, oh, then I'm sure you won't mind, um, you know, both of you spending time with me. Yes, we've met before. Once. Or are they like mortal enemies? In which case, even better, because that's some passion right there. Oh, mmm, mmm. In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madame Fay. Madame, I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. I am 20... Three. Oh my God, she's a lawyer at 23, damn. Okay, you plan to go on Phoenix Place, yeah, Phoenix and Ordot who behind the building and so on, and then we got wobbly and collapsed. Are you saying the victim just collapsed on his own? 
Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim, is that right? I was watching the whole time, and he never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. So what should I say about her testimony just now? Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I... I, I would never... <sighs> Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness! I believe the defense is engaged in a fishing expedition! No, I went camping last week and I couldn't catch a single thing! That is, uh, she has no supporting, uh. Please don't glare at me like that! I'm doing my job, okay? Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the, t the whole truth. Mmm. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will. If you don't mind. I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Uh, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Doug. He, it didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. So then, what did it look like they were doing to you? I thought they were having a nice, friendly afternoon conversation. Oh, give me a break. That's why I really wasn't watching them that closely at all. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Oh, wait, come on, come on, come on. I understand if you weren't paying attention to, um, Phoenix, but you telling me you ain't paying attention to him, Mr. Um, Smoking Hot Doug Swallow. Oh, uh, hello. Hello, Mr. Like, are you telling me your eyes were not glued to his rock hard abs, even though he was wearing a shirt and a coat? Um, I'm, I'm sure the rock hard abs are there somewhere. No, nothing at all, Mr. Judge. Oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. Oh, 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 would you like to see me after the trial? We have to discuss evidence. Um, um, now then, please proceed with your testimony <laughs> You say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Yes. That's why I was very relaxed. I was looking at the scenery around me. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright, and he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? But according to Mr. Wright, the testimony, Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Ah! I don't want to pee us! Um, may I have a moment to answer? Oh, by all means! I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on. And there were those really good noise-canceling ones. You know, the ray bands. Oh, I only know the, um, ear pods. Oh, you stupid judge. You don't use ray bands? Wait, are ray bands 
headphones? I don't even know where I'm going with this. I was listening to music at the time. Wait, no, Ray-Bans are sunglasses, right? No, no, Ray-Bans are sunglasses, right? Are we allowed to bring butterflies to court? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. Headphones? That means both of your ears are covered! The rain was just beginning to let up, but it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Oh. Just just present some thunder and lightning. Done. Done. We can we can bring reasonable doubt to this. Well, I mean, I don't know how reasonable. Done! 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 Um, the victim was killed by lightning. Done! 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 Bring up reasonable doubt. We're, it's over. It's over. Wait. There is no such thing as reasonable doubt in Japan of Fornia! Yeah, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. It's a good thing that I had a big strong man there to take care of me. So, I put my headphones on to block it out. <laughs> well, your honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in his testimony after her testimony after all. Oh, I bet you, I bet you. The plot twist is Dahlia is a guy. That's the plot twist. Oh my god, that's the plot twist. That is 100% the plot twist. Mmm. <gasps> Wait a second, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. W what do you mean? You didn't notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes. What about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Why do we need to know that? Okay, okay, I, I'm, 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 I'm chalking this up to, this is a Japanese game, I'm pretty sure in the Japanese version, she literally said, LIGHTNING! <laughs> and as a result, the Japanese viewers are like, the Japanese viewers are like, what the frick is LIGHTNING? NANDA? <laughs> NANI KORE? <laughs> Now's not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Remember, this is a game for little kids full of murder. <laughs> Anyway, Your Honor, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Wait, why is she nervous? She's trying to prove her boyfriend innocent. Right? I must admit that thought had not occurred to me. So what kind of thoughts do occur in this guy's head anyway? Bum, 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 bum. Ha <laughs> ha My hammer is big! Oh ho ho ho! The entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believed that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? <laughs> All right, you did it, Mia. <laughs> I'm hurt you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at that location. He researched the lightning patterns? Like, how do you, how, how did you know that? We have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to the case. Evidence? Mr. Payne, what is this evidence? You see, evidence is something we present in court. In order to prove some- No! What is the evidence you're presenting? Oh, uh, this affidavit! And who is this David? Um... The pharmacology students! One of them was named David, and he was conducting experiments in the labs that day. 
Allow me to read out the court, the testimony of the pharmacology students, specifically David. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely! They lost power because of severed electrical cables! The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly! In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed cable! According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. That, how is no one being sued for negligence? You can, why, why um, can we, can we, instead of, can we, can we, um, can we argue that it's not Phoenix's fault, it's actually the, um, uh, the, um, the, the university's fault, or, um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe we can get him only 10 years in prison instead of life. Apparently the cables have become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to- Okay, we're suing for negligence. It's like, it's over, it's over. We are going to sue for negligence. Student's testimony. The old power cable broke at 2.55. Okay, that's a much more specific time than around three o'clock. However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, it wouldn't have snapped. Wait, then wouldn't it have snapped if it... Then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your honor? I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something and try to regain momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it! Who or what caused the cable to break? What? Who, who caused... Who or what caused the cable to break? Attorney's badge. Doug's autopsy report. The crime took place. The victim's death. Umbrella. Near an electrical pole. Dolly is present. Newspaper clipping from eight months ago. Oh, let's take a look at this. Wait, that's literally it? I mean, we could argue. I mean, there's like a million different ways to argue this, but all we need to establish is that Phoenix wasn't at the point of murder. The point of murder? Phoenix wasn't at the, um, the, 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 the murder, um, Phoenix wasn't at the murder during the time of death. We don't, we, it doesn't matter who exactly caused it. I mean, there's one of several possibilities, but, okay, 255. Okay, so the, the, okay, let's take a look at this, right? They argue that this was broken at 255. Uh, or the old power cable broke to 255. However, the watch stopped at approximately 305, 310. Um... Which means whatever caused the breaking. Okay, if Doug had caused the break, if let's suppose Doug fell on it. Let's suppose Doug fell on the cable. Doug was electrocuted at 255. There are multiple paths that we can go. No, Doug was electrocuted around 35, 310. However, uh, 
All right, Doug was electrocuted at around 305 or 310. I'm trying to figure out what they want me to say. Um, Doug, I, 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 I understand approximately the case, right? Uh, um, what's it? Phoenix kill, Phoenix pushed Doug. And then either someone, Doug got up and someone pushed him again, or someone, um, or someone electrocuted them, uh, him. But it's also possible since it was raining that it doesn't matter who broke the cable. What matters is the cable was broken and someone used it to kill him. And it also means whoever pushed Doug, it also means whoever, it means that the cable was broken at 255. Let's see what Phoenix said again. Victim sound umbrella happened. This is loud. Small bottle. Victim fell 255. The old power cable broke on impact at 255. The broken power cable broke due to some sort of impact. You know, if it was an impact, we can make an interesting argument here. Okay, this is, I'm gonna present a, a, a theory. Did you come back to an overdose? Yeah, people were taking cold medicine and then someone got electrocuted. Um, okay, let's make an argument here. If Doug was pushed, and we argued that the um, umbrella is approximately where he would have been pushed from, Doug could have hit the electrical pole, right? They argued that the umbrella was near the electrical pole. Um, I, not really obvious in this picture, but that's what they said. Doug, they could argue that Doug hit the electrical pole. That's why when Phoenix hit him, he fell over. Um, he probably hit the electrical pole. The, um, the wire broke because of his impact with the electrical pole because the wires are so freaking weak because nobody is taking, performing maintenance. And then someone moved his body later right this is okay what happened is that somebody took advantage of the broken electrical wire which is dahlia dahlia took advantage of the broken electrical wire that's why instead of killing doug where he was she was forced to drag doug over to the electrical wire right that's why his body moved his body moved specifically because he need she needed this wire so which means we can argue that um phoenix and doug had this push and had this fight and that um the, the thing was broken because it doesn't freaking matter. All right, so let's go ahead and just say, yeah, sure, Phoenix and Doug, why not? This is it, this is why the cable snapped. Well, you're on it. Okay, apparently that's not, apparently that's not what they want to say. I believe the only thing that has snapped is the mind of the defense. Ah, that was one of your best lines yet. Wow, this streamer sure is dumb. Don't look at me. Don't look at my shame. <laughs> well, let's hear it. Who or what caught? Okay, that's actually very nice of them to um um to um give me several chances because there's you know there's several there's several directions this can go. Uh, Phoenix's testimony, this umbrella was loud on top, um, victim's death crime, the victim's death time, but who or what? Who or what caused the cable to break? Are they saying who did the pushing? Your Honor? Okay, I see. They didn't want the fact that Doug's body hit the electrical cable. They want the fact that Phoenix pushed him. Fair enough. Um, Your Honor. Please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds about... Wait, are you saying... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What? What's that supposed to mean? 
Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. Apparently. That's right. The victim banged into the pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Mmm. So that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted! My bangs are very cute. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Order in the court! Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. That is a very strange statement. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct! There doesn't seem to be any way the defen- Um, Mr. Judge, sir? May I say something? The Madame Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What? what 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 Wow! What, what, what? Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge. Of course it's all right. Just go ahead and give your new testimony. This thought. She's finally starting to show her true colors. What I witnessed, part two. The truth is, Phoebe pushed him twice. I, I cannot believe it. <sighs> the first time was in the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted. It all occurred in less than a minute. Less than a minute, you say? After being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm, I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I just have to tell the truth. Am I... Am I doing the right thing, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fanny, you may proceed with the cross-examination. All right, let's go. Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry. I didn't actually see it. I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out the contradiction here, it's all- wait, that was seriously all she had to say? She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia! The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. First time, electrical pole. So Doug the best on the way. Feeney crashed into him, the cable being electrocuted. Feeney caught up to him and crashed into him from behind. You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole? I know he doesn't look it, but... Feeney can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. Especially in bed. Oh, Feeney. Uh, uh, um, re really? But I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. Feeney's really scary when he gets mad. This sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. I know, Feeny, Feeny is awful. The, the name Feeny. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched the scene unfold? <laughs> Miss Faith! I'll have you ask 
you to stop badgering the witness! I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I can do is stand there and cheer them up. What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for both of them. That they would each give their fight their all. That's very sweet of you to be so supportive! You've gotta be. That doesn't sound quite right. There were hand prints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, if there were also print, were there also prints found on the back of the leather jacket? Ah, uh, well, no, there weren't. But I'm Fay. May I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? Fini wouldn't leave any prints from behind in that case, would he? I swear to God. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. No. I'm sorry. I just wanted to protect Feeny. So that's why you basically lied to the court? I was a bad girl. I know. I'm a very bad girl, Mr. Judge. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Forgive me for being such a bad girl. Of course he won't. What you said? Oh, come on now. It was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time, but please be more careful, all right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. <laughs> The judge had better be more careful of himself. A dark alleyway is friendlier than that girl. Thank goodness it's a girl taking on Dahlia. Let's be real here. Phoenix would have fallen apart in like five minutes. Uh, the cable broke. It all occurred in less than a minute. Well, we've pressed her for all we can. We didn't get anything interesting. So we just got to present evidence. It all occurred in less than a minute. You got this. And you got this. Addiction. That's enough, witness! I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye. My point is this. What time was it that the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55! Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during this 10 minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during this interval the real murderer killed Doug Swallow. Order in the court! What is the song? This is nonsense! The real murderer! Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. There was a window of opportunity for the real killer. Miss Faye! Is the defense ready to indict someone as the real killer? I suppose in this case we actually have to because 
reasonable doubt apparently doesn't apply to Japanifornia. This is the moment I've been waiting for! Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Who is we? Me and Mr. Gro- Mr. Gro- Mr. Grossberg. Mr. Gro- uh, Me and my imaginary friend. Okay. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully. It was me! I did it! <laughs> it only could have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne! How could you? The defense is grasping at straws! Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing during that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order! Miss Faye! Well, I mean, uh, that is to... Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. <laughs> Dang. Did did Mia just airbend like a supercurrent to push down Dahlia? How can you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge you are. Phoenix, don't don't do this. Don't do this. Um, 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 the, Mia, Mia, call for your client to be held in contempt. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Please, Your Honor, I have something I want to say. You? What is it? Please strike everything the defense has said from the record. No, 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 no. Hold her in contempt. Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye! Dolly, she... She couldn't have done something like that! Have you seen her face? She's innocent! So innocent! Too innocent! Look at her! So innocent, it's sinister! Mr. Wright! Get back in your seat! Bailiff! Grab that man! <laughs> right away, sir. All right, Phoenix, you come with me. Ah! Ah! Oh, me, he's a huge man! Ah, oh, not the type of man I like! Ah, oh, leave her alone! That boy. He's gotten himself way over his head. Oh! Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident your news in your newspaper clipping. Police report. Perfect. Thank you. My man Hemorrhoid Grossberg is coming through for us. Um incident overview. Location, district courtroom cafe. Diego Armando. Dang, that sounds like a hunk. Too bad he was murdered. Um occupation lawyer. Suspect, Dolly Hawthorne. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. Hey, my boy. Um, no poison was found in the vicinity or in the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the suspect's person. It's unclear how the poison entered the you, 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 you do not, do not do this to me. Do not, do, do, do not do this to me.
That's why she hates it when he shows it off to people, and that's why she's always asking for it back. She literally is a serial killer who's using Phoenix to commit murder. That is... Oh my god. Oh my... You, you cannot... You can't... You do not do this to me. Don't... Don't... Do not... Do not... Do not do this to me. Oh my god. She kills Diego as he's saying, Come on, Dora! Okay! Vamanos! And as he was heading to um, go on an adventure, he's like, do you see a cup of coffee? It was coffee, right? There! What do we do with the coffee? We drink it! Go, 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 go. Oh no! Diego's dead! What do we do, Boots? And then he died, and then she literally... And then she gave him the necklace because it has a bottle of, it's a bottle of poison. It's a bottle of poison. Okay, let's let's think. Let's think. I I have, I have Okay, so if let's suppose she murdered Diego. Not Diego, Doug. Um let's suppose she murdered Doug. Okay, she murdered Doug. Okay, Phoenix Phoenix was eating lunch with Dahlia. She took the cold killer X. So she could plant it on Doug. But there was no way for her to have known that they would even get into a fight. So, and yet she used the... She was trying to murder Phoenix. She wasn't trying to kill Doug. She was trying to kill Phoenix. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my freaking god. How's it going, Orbits? Okay, let's put this together. Uh, one year, eight months ago. Eight months ago, um, she kills someone. She finds Phoenix and says, I love you, Phoenix. There, here, have this necklace. So she gives him the necklace, which is the evidence. That's the reason why the police couldn't find the evidence on her. Um, and so she wanted the bottle back. How was she going to do that? She was going to kill Phoenix. And how, she was going, how was she going to kill Phoenix? by taking his medicine and poisoning it. She didn't steal the medicine because she wanted to plant it on Doug. She stole the medicine because she wanted to give it back to Phoenix and make him eat it. That's... That's the case. Oh boy. You'd better take a good look at it. It's uh, details on how you came to lose your boyfriend. I am going to murder this girl. I am going to straight up murder this girl. I swear to God, Dahlia Hawthorne. I swear to freaking God. 
Okay, when you guys see this and you don't see me scream, oh no, she has a boyfriend. When you guys see this situation and don't see me simp, you know it's freaking serious. I swear to freaking God. Also, she's not single? Oh, no. She has a boyfriend. Had a boy. She had a boyfriend. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm so, so I'm, I'm so sorry you lost your boyfriend. Can I, um, would you like to, um, um, tell me all about it? Maybe over dinner? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Sorry for the pause, guys. You guys, I hope you guys know that I like to think through all the thoughts. So sometimes you get pauses of me like looking through things and like you can, you can see my like train of thought. I try as much as possible to communicate my train of thought. But sometimes they're just going to be like, oh, what about this? How about this? How does this piece in? So I hope you guys enjoy that. You guys get to see actually what I'm thinking. Um, now then, Mr. Payne. What do you have to say about this? Well, I, you, your, your honor, I, you see. May I interrupt you for a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. <laughs> uh, that, that is, uh, go, go right ahead. Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried pinning the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this! <laughs> uh, so sorry, please go ahead! Um, I also want to say... I was right. She is literally a serial killer. Like, she is a frickin' serial murderer. Oh my frickin' god. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Fanny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear! Monokuma! <sighs> oh. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth would be her motive. The answer lies somewhere in this police report. It must. <laughs> Monokuma's in the gallery. <laughs> Eight months ago, an incident occurred in this basement cafeteria of this building. And then, on that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. I will never be able to look at the word bear the same again. I swear to God, what has Danganronpa done to me? Uh, further testimony? What about? About the events on the day of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims she has no reason to frame the defendant. Am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests she, in fact, has a very good reason. Very well. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on for a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your lifetime, Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh my god, I can't wait until all her bones are broken. Like, I don't even care about defending this girl anymore. Look at her. Look at her evil. Look at those, look, look at that, look at that darkness in her eyes. Like, her eyes are like just pitch black. There is nothing in there. I swear to god. You know, do you know what I would simp for? Do you know what I would simp for? I would simp for Dahlia Hawthorne's head. Hung on my wall! You do not, you do not hurt my Mia Fey. Oh. 
these these bear jokes are awful, and I, you guys are killing me. You want to kill Phoenix Wright? Fine. You want to kill Miles Edgeworth? That's pushing it. But when you touch a Fey, oh, oh, your head, I am going to be kissing your head severed and nailed to my wall. You don't hurt, you don't touch a Fey. I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courtroom's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. That made you skip a beat? Come on. Faze Bay, Manic Hit 2022. <laughs> We've been going out ever since that faithful day. We're so lovey lovey. It literally makes people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright! Do that a- Oh, that was Phoenix. Wait, that was Phoenix. Oh. We're so lovey-wovey, it literally makes people sick. They're just jealous, I think. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Do that again and you will be held in contempt. Why is he not already held in contempt? And now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in these days of my youth, Go get her. That we literally say that now. All right, let's see this. I first met Feeny. It's like we were destined to meet in this basement reading room. The moment our eyes met. All right, tell me what happened. The courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. Not true, Madame Fay. After all, Feeny was not only an arts. Oh God, he's an art student. Oh no! Oh no! He's never gonna get a job now. No wonder he's struggling with his bills. Oh, Phoenix, no! No, Phoenix, no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding for all you artists out there. If you want to study art, go, go study art. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hoffle. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Faye, I'm warning you. This has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case. I have to remember. The judge is on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully. Keep going. You're on the right track. Your Honor, if you will allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her time. No, you're supposed to establish relevance first. Present the, present the case file. Very well, young lady. I've got a simple question for you. Will you marry, um, where were you, um, what were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases your honor, the answer is simply this. I had come to the courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. The frick. You were writing a paper on what? On the relationship between the modern senryu poetry and the criminal underworld. She was writing a paper on the Yakuza? Oh, that sounds like a fascinating research idea. <laughs> Am I getting old? Now I've even forgotten what I've forgotten. Oh, what? Wait, hold on, what? Again with the midlife crisis stuff? Mia, why did that girl really come to the courthouse? Isn't that what you wanted to know? And speaking of things, have you already forgotten the police report? No! I literally am pressing things because that's what the game wants you to do! Wait. Listen to me, Mia. The woman has the judge in the palm of her hand, you see? So the only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. Okay, can I just say... I do, um, 
Um, I do have respect for Grossberg that he's not simping for Dahlia right now, so... Mwah. Good job. Um... Okay, let's find that contradiction. Uh, do a research paper at the moment, hard to We'll be going out of. I come to your courthouse. It's like, oh man, I come to the courthouse to do a paper. Uh. Police report. Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? smile on your face, Miss Faye! Eight months ago, right here, in this very courtroom, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. So say goodbye. I'ma watch you fry. Oh, uh <laughs> I'm, I'm, I do rapping on the side. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! That is unbelievable. Miss Faye, that's not fair! You can't slander the witness! I, Winston Payne, will not- Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Um, um, par pardon me, go right ahead! It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me, but so many boys expressed interest in me that Sometimes I lose track of them all. Express some interest. Oh, 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 oh. oh tell me what they did in excruciating... D judge! Stop! Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred in the incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tried the two crimes together. Now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, oh, you've lit a fire in my heart and my buttocks. Looks like someone had Taco Bell. <laughs> I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. Thank you. The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was this poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From then, what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. How do you know such specific information? My god. Not only that, I heard of a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that, let alone the details of all those poisons, and the exact measurements, and, um, the, the... <laughs> Hmm. So that's what happened eight months ago. However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Miss Payne, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. suddenly feel stronger and way more beautiful than Dahlia Hawthorne. Screw that Dahlia Hawthorne! I hate her! I hate her! I hate her! Uh, 
Aha! Uh -huh. Mia, you're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. That proud posture and self-confidence absolutely smashing. All right, the poisoning. I met the lawyer. That's when I felt a bad liquid poison. Sure, she happened to hear it. But there is something very specific. I wouldn't even know where to get that poison. Hmm? Are you sure? And that's the reason why they didn't arrest you? Because no one could show how you could have gotten the poison? I think that's a good enough reason, Madame Fay. She's right! And I think I've had enough of Miss Fay's questions! So in essence, the main reason Miss Hawthorne was never arrested for the crime was because no one could show how she could have obtained the poison? Then all we have to do is establish a way, a how she, establish how she could have gotten that poison. Great. Now, how did a lit student of all things get hold of a poison? Well, I believe you, Dahlia. You don't know where to get a poison like that. But... No! No, wrong button! I set up the dramatic, the dramatic line! And then I present my lawyer's badge! Ah! Oh! I set up the dramatic one-liner! I set up a dramatic one-liner and then I present my lawyer's badge! <laughs> oh, contradictions. It could be. It has to be, right? I knew it! However, your evidence doesn't show whatever you think you see. Objection denied! Let's try this again. You see, I believe <laughs> this is where Phoenix's bad evidence presentation comes from. <laughs> I believe you are correct. You wouldn't know where to get a poison like that. But you know someone who would! You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. In fact, you had access to that kind of poison, didn't you? at your boyfriend's lab. Boyfriend? You, you mean the victim, Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. Pharmacology? His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could have never obtained such a rare and special poison! Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then, it was a matter of shipping, slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was you, sitting at his very table. Order! Order! Could it... Could it be? That, that's nothing but a baseless accu- May I say something, Madame Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true! In fact, the entire court house was turned upside down! But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of some- Excuse me, madame, but this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. She got me good with- No, she didn't. You know what the proof is. Provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Fay. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're gonna lose this lead! The po police conducted a full body search of Dahlia in the entire courthouse, and yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime scene. Right after the crime occurred. If you're going to- uh, If you're going to accuse this young lady of committing murder, 
Then where is the container the poison was carried in? What happened to it? You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright. So the defendant was the witness's accomplice! Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. Hmm, that's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does this mean, Miss Faith? The day that the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago, August 27th, the very same day as this poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? Good thing, um, Phoenix isn't so much of a simp to lick the necklace. No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. Uh-oh. Order in the court, um... Phoenix, no! On behalf of Dolly, I object! Mr. Wright, control yourself! Stop, bro, I won't let you bully her like this! Mr. Wright, I told you to stay in your seat! Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through this much trouble to protect her? Why? Because... Because I'm madly in love with her! You keep telling yourself that, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia want to date you anyway? Ooh, 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 Mia, 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 don't do my boy Phoenix like that. Oh, oh, Mia with the harsh reality. Oh, oh, you're not that pretty. You're not that smart. <laughs> you don't make a good salary. Well, I guess she must be uh, madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please open your eyes. You love Miles Edgeworth. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... Dahlia Hawthorne was not and is not madly in love with you. The only reason she's after... The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My... My necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Phoenix, give me the necklace back now. Oh, she has such a cute voice, man. I love her. <laughs> For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to give it back. You're lying! But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No! That's a lie! Mia, are you alright? Wait, he punched her? Mia! 
are you all right? I think so. That boy went completely insane. Fe oh, Phoenix. Oh, oh, Phoenix, I am going to whoop your ass. Oh, you do not want to mess with me. Oh, my freaking God, Phoenix. <sighs> Where's Mr. Wright? It looks like the bailiff caught him. Oh, it looks like the bailiff caught him. He should be back soon enough. Oh, thank, oh no. The, the bottle necklace. Miss Hawthorne's present. It's Phoenix, I swear to God. What? That's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy! That's the only thing that could have saved him! What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. Oh, wait till in five years I'm going to be a lawyer. You're going to see a lot more of that. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm afraid your apology isn't enough! Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me, I... I I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, just give me back the necklace. I... I... I ate it. How's it going, Blue Star? How's it going, Mimi? This is the worst game ever. You. You what? You. You. You ate it. I'm... I'm not even mad. I'm just... I'm just disappointed. Oh. You're doing good. You love Phoenix Wright? Well, welcome to the stream. I love Phoenix Wright too, except sometimes I hate it so much. <laughs> it was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits first, but yeah, well, it's time to wait for somewhere between 14 to 18 hours. Um, Phoenix, take these laxatives. I'll see you soon. Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, are you feeling... Uh, does your stomach hurt? 
The bottle you swallowed may have some poison le- Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. He's guilty of destroying evidence. He's guilty of perjury. He's guilty of, um, what is it? Tampering with the crime scene. He's guilty of assault. He's guilty of like 17 things right now. Clearly the bottle did not contain a deadly- It was freaking eight months ago. It could have easily chemically changed into something different. How can you be so sure? I think it's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. Mmm. So it would seem. No. No. There must be some mistake. The bottle must not have any poison left in it. Either that or the poison must have lost its potency. It's all right, you little rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see how you've placed this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. After she probably murders me brutally, like she murdered like 15 other men. Oh my god. Which is why I can state your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, I cannot accept your explanation of the events. But, but why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand. But in a court of law, evidence is everything. Even after I prove this much, she's gonna get away with everything. How, why? This, 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 this court is a circus. This court is a freaking clown court. I swear to God. Um, Blue Star says, it seems my learned Nipponese friend is auditioning to become a clown the way he regales us with such witticisms to your future career as a cir in the circus. Oh, Edgeworth, we love you. Um, this, this is a frickin', this is a frickin' clown court. Mr. Wright? I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Fay. It totally slipped my mind. I'm, Really sorry. I know you believed in me and I feel like I really let you down. That's not Edgeworth? Oh, oops. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Uh, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, that day I met Doug Swallow. That girl, oh, you shouldn't see her anymore. I'm very British. Stop with that fake British accent. It's none of your business. Oh, but didn't you see that you did jack on my shirt? Oh, pip pip cheerio. Oh, do not keep dating her. You're lying. Just listen to me, sire. Oh, oh, can I pour you a spot of tea as we continue? You see that girl? She stole some poison from our lab. Oh, ha ha ha. Oh, you see, I'm very British and it was a British poison. Poison. Oh, the same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. You don't even sound British, man. Stop that. Oh, she came to the lab that time, too. Uh, dude, your British accent sounds fake. I know a guy who actually is British, and he's really, really hot. Uh, it could only have been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Stop being British! It's from Great Ace Attorney. Oh, that's way later in the series. Is it true? Did he really have that bad of an accent? That's ridiculous! No one can pretend to be British that badly! 
There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about... Gee, this would have been great if you had presented it at the beginning. I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, this defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. So Dolly is still poison eight months ago too, huh? If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing was to kill someone. I can't believe I was right. I'm sorry, Phoenix. I'm sorry, but this is reality. Um, Miss Faye? Oh, if you're certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. Mia, this is your last chance. Think carefully. There's something she desperately wanted to get back. Exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning on killing? <sighs> I'm sorry, buddy. She's not that attractive, come on. Um, the simp meter is usually counting me simping, but I will say, I only have one instance of simping. I'm very proud of myself. Oh my god. No, you guys are just being nice. I've simped for like Mia like 20 times this stream. Um, there was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Phoenix Wright. Ha! Uh, yeah, I'm pretty hot. Wait, me? That's preposterous! After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered! Well, it's true that that's how things worked out. But let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else it could have been. But how can that... I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love! Oh, Mr. Wright. This must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice, I swear. And then someday in the future, I'll re reunite you with your true love. As I said before, there's only one thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about. That one piece of evidence linking her to the incident eight months ago. That's right, the bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why would she go as far as to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could think of only one thing. How to get rid of that bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made. The evidence was missing for a long time. But there was one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright was a massive simp. To him, that tiny little bottle was like buying bathwater from a streamer. He showed it to everyone he met. You mean, that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. That can't be true! Feeny. What a joke you are. Honestly, how could any woman count on you for anything?
I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne? It appears we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine. I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne! We'll see about that, but first... Where's your evidence? It seems your sniveling little crybaby of a cry client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Well, uh... Hey, old man, are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face, sitting there with your sorry ass and that fucking gavel in your hand? <gasps> Miss Hawthorne, what's happened to you? <laughs> Are you really that shocked? Hey, do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Uh, uh... With absolutely no true proof. You treat a volunteering witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now if you don't mind. But we're not fit. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. Stop. Me Mia! If you keep on pushing without evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer! The ultimate price? You'll have to buy everyone in the gallery chips! Oh, I've done that myself too. Oh. $39.95 for a 12 pack! Oh. <laughs> Oh, also, you'll be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever. Uh, no. You'd better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I say, Miss Fucking Bitch? Well, Miss Faye. Can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? You'll never hear the word Dahlia the same ever again. I've never heard the word Dahlia, and I still don't think I'm going to hear it the same again. If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point, I don't have any evidence that's well-founded. Really? 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 We've established this, like, in the recess. We literally established this in the recess. How? How? Are you, what, you present it. Just present. Go. Go. Pre present, present it, present it, go, go. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible! You can't possibly! Stupid woman. It is the opinion of the court that there has already been enough to dis discussion. Therefore, I will only allow one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you are unable to establish her guilt, I am afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Phoenix Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up-and-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright, and if that's the case, then the poison was probably there. Well then, Miss Fay, please prevent, send your evidence. Even though I said only one, it seems that I'm only going to go after three bars of um, penalty. Show it to the court! Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X. Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. A 
Yeah, I take like seven a day, even though the recommended dosage is like three. Oh man, it makes me feel really good. Sometimes I feel all dizzy, but like that dizzy feeling is awesome. Don't drive a car after you do it. Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this medicine. After all, it's cheap. Oh, also, it's been, um, poisoned. What? I thought Cold Killer X was brand name! Remember what the defendant said in his testimony. But I lost my bottle around lunchtime on the day of the accident. I always eat with Dolly. Just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it knowing that Mr. Wright never takes brand name drugs. Now you're really grasping at straws. I'm sure Mr. Wright has his financial finances in a good situation. After all, the victim Doug Swallow was holding that medicine. I would like to, the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Hey, ETV, hello, welcome. Oh. What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace, which she gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Miss Dur Phoenix Wright. I was about to say Miss Phoenix Wright. I'm sorry, Phoenix. <laughs> yes, that's right. She did the same thing as well this time. Doug Swallow looks like Matt on guard. Shabra! <laughs> After shoving the victim, Phoenix Wright left the crime scene. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. Oh, hello, my love. Have you come to experience my British self again? With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Phoenix Wright. You're not even British. Oh, no, don't murder me. <laughs> I believe she did testify when she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, and she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Including what the defendant and the victim were arguing about and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realized, I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when her problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the crime scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. <laughs> it's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying that bottle, that bottle of poison cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they search me like they did eight months ago? months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence in the exact same way she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. She could have literally just given it to Phoenix. Phoenix would have hidden it. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? That stupid woman. She's nothing but a filthy, stinking, skank thought, bitch ass liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, she's um, uh, ugly. Yeah. Uh, that, that's exactly right. Uh, it, it's just a um, pure desperation. Ha ha ha. Hmm. I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Dahlia would sell her bathwater. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, 
then there's no need to worry about a bitch like me. So come on, show us. I dare you to take the medicine right now. Just fine for the time being. Victory is yours. For the time being. Well, I have a very, very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge. I'll see you later too, okay? Oh, wait, uh, yum, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I'm gonna go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. Oh, I love a man in blue. Oh, I wish you all the best. Oh no, please don't manhandle me like you did. Uh, stop, stop. Um, ma'am, we just want to get you in hand. Oh, handcuffs? Uh, stop, miss, miss! Someone punch her. Wait, wait, no, no, I'm up. Yeah, that, that felt pretty good. Whew. It's finally all over. I... I refuse to accept this! The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim! Um, thoughts on the true culprit? I would never simp for her. And I'm a massive simp. Because, I mean, oh my god, Miss Mia Fe mm, mm, Oh my goodness. No, like, hold on, hold on, let's get to Mia Fey's portrait. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it! I don't care! I'm Winston Bane! And I don't believe that one word that rookie lawyer said. Oh! Hello, hello, miss. Mm, 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 mm. I don't mind if you get thrown out of court wearing that because like, let's just say you are always welcome in my court. And in my court, there's no one but me and you. So please, please, oh, um, miss, miss Mia. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, girl. Mm, mm, mm. Let's just, let's just, let's just stare at her for a few moments. Hey, darling. Oh my. Oh my, oh, oh, mm, oh my goodness. Do you know what is the cutest thing about Mia Fey? Her very large desire for justice! That's right, Mia! Well then, Miss Pay Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes? Would you care to try this cold medicine? What? Her funny little scarf is cute. Her funny little scarf is cute. Uh, just a little earlier. I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust me, the witness with my life. So, if she's trustworthy then I'm sure there couldn't possibly any be any poison in here, right? Ah, uh, well, uh, you see, yeah, um. And here comes the back pedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much do you trust? How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? Did he actually do it? Okay. Dahlia. 
You can hurt Phoenix. You can hurt the judge. Hell, you can even hurt the Fae sisters. But when you hurt Winston Payne's hair, oh, it is on, it is on. Oh, oh, Winston Payne's hair, you will be avenged. I promise. Oh, Winston Payne's hair, how dare you? Yes, Your Honor. I'll file papers for her immediate arrest. Hmm. Tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Okay, you simp. By the way, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor? Was it just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whatever we did, or not, has no bearing on this case. Hmm. Very well. Uh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening! It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? It... it can't be true! My dear Dolly! Very well then, I believe we are ready to pass judgment and bring an end to this trial. The court finds the defendant, Phoenix Wright. I swear to God, this trial could have gone much faster if M Mia and Payne actually do their jobs correctly. I swear to God, I swear to God, since when has it been my, my job to make the, the, client, my, my, the, the defendant look guilty? That, that has never been my job. What the frick? This court is adjourned. Um, this is a clown court. Phoenix, see you in five years for more, um, for more circus. Mia, you were wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. Also, Mr. Grossberg's hemorrhoids. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvi. I did not need that image. And now I'm imagining it. Thank you. Get out. Get out of my head. Get out. Get out. This is the worst. This is the worst. Um, Mr. Grossberg. Um, do you think maybe you could stop talking about your hemorrhoids? Uh, good night and happy birthday. Thanks so much, Arcane. Well, that's rather rude. Anyway, this case really made me think. Um, what are hemorrhoids? You'll learn when you're older, Anson Man. If you don't know the, um, if you don't know what they are, you're too young to know. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright, congratulations. Uh, thanks. Y you know, I was thinking. The dolly I saw up there on the witness stand, I don't think that was really her. Um, what? Yeah, the dolly I know could have never said those kinds of terrible things. Maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something. This kid is still in denial that he's actually in love with Edgeworth. It's okay. I'll help that relationship along. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your sake. Yeah, you're right. It's probably for the best. Shut up, brah. You also need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But... Out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. What kind of company, company does this guy keep? Right now, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. You're an art student, buddy. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, I should be able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Fay. A lawyer is always someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? 
Mr. Wright, I'm still new at this myself. But I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna study my butt. I'm gonna... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna study my butt off. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me try again. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope. We should see each other again someday. Maybe even in court! Shabra. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned, and I managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a but Mia, I miss you. Mia, I love you. Uh, the dub is good. The bloopers are good. I've never actually watched the dub. I've never watched the anime in the first place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. Shabra, it also brings up some very precious ones memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now. But even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always do your taxes. In a court of law. I'm not- I can't keep going with this. Five long years. Something's happened that made me think back to her words of wisdom. That's a story for another day. Cue the, the end and the to be continued. A brand new episode. Who is this man? And why is he so smexy? All right. We will see the very beginning of the next trial for Cliffhanger. The time is 1 a.m. Beep, 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 beep. Detective, we made it! Ugh, what a relief. Glad the jewel's safe. Hey, my boy! <laughs> you said it, bro. Must have been a rock solid defense. Would you mind opening it just to double check? Stop! Front guards, turn on the surge lights. <laughs> Better luck next time, gentlemen. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm afraid I must be leaving. We shall meet again when the next moon is full. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we are going to end the stream for today. Dang. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Is that... Um, oh, before I um, continue, for those of you who are new to the stream, I like to chat with my viewers afterwards just a little bit. If, if you guys want to just chat and hang out with me for a little bit, that's perfectly, um, uh, that's perfectly fine. I would love to, you know, learn more about you. Um, and I, uh, yeah, so on and so forth. Um, 
What was I gonna say? Right. Are we taking on a um? Are we taking on a um? What is it? Um, a a uh, a larceny case? Because now that I think about it, we've only ever taken on murder cases. Are we gonna take on a larceny? Finally, like, are we gonna take on a case where no one dies? Are we gonna take on a case where no one actually dies? Because freaking thank freaking God. We're taking on a larceny case. That's freaking awesome. Like, I knew they were going to have a larceny case. Like, no, like, I knew they would probably do something eventually. Like, that's different. I'm glad that they took it on. Well, yes, but actually, no. Is, is the thing that he stole a human body? <laughs> he stole a human body, and that's the murder case. Yeah, my boy's committing grand larceny. At least they're not killing people. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Although, that is interesting. Um, someone said, mask de mask. A new case? Yeah, I'm curious to know what this case is about, because you know, generally we see like a murder happen in um the at the at the beginning. This one is some guy just stole something. We're taking on a larceny case. That's freaking awesome. Hmm. I think the first, uh, try, I don't know if that's a spoiler, but try not to, um, reveal too many details, um, Blue Star, because I d am playing this for the first time, so please be careful with your spoilers. Um, you like theft? I mean, me too. Uh, yeah. So I gotta figure out what I wanna do for the rest of my birthday. Um, but, you know, this is a very nice birthday present, seeing people come to my, uh, stream. Um, that guy looked like he came out of Cyberpunk? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Um, although, uh, I don't know, I've never actually played Cyberpunk, so I wouldn't know, but, I mean, I guess so. Eat cake. I don't have cake. Yeah, it's been a very dull birthday. Hopefully the water's back on so I can like um, buy a cupcake for dinner and eat it. Nah, I can't, I can't, I can't eat unhe that unhealthy. I did treat myself to um, a nice breakfast though. I went to a really nice, um, uh, what is it, diner and I ordered like stuffed French toast, but it was stuffed with so much freaking cream. I swear to God, I felt like my stomach bloat and like, I don't think I'm gonna be eating like anything like cream based for like the next month. Oh my God, that was so freaking strong. Have some coffee, it's it's um almost bedtime. Well, it's not almost bedtime, but it's, what is it? It's, it's almost 8 p.m. for me. <sighs> Happy birthday, thanks guys. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys, you know, hung out with me on my birthday. Um, to tell you the truth, um, I don't expect too many viewers on my Phoenix Wright streams because for some reason, um, less people end up coming to my Phoenix Wright streams, at least historically. Um, coffee with my cake, it's a good pairing. But I, I need to sleep at some point in my life. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, what was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying. Yeah, but... Yeah, for some reason my Phoenix Wright streams never get too many viewers, so it's really it's really nice to have you guys here and hanging out. And I know a lot of you now, you guys come not for the game, but, you know, just to spend time. Um, and, uh, um, and, you know, kind of enjoy yourself and enjoy being in the presence of others while we, while we play a game together. And I think that's um, something I really value. So, you know, thank you guys. Thank you for being a birthday. Thank you for being the birthday present to an extent. <laughs> decaf then? Uh, I have a thing against decaf. It's like, if you're gonna drink coffee, why drink decaf? <laughs> <laughs> you 
you watched the sequel of Avatar. I hope it was good. I don't know much about Avatar. I know it was a very high grossing movie and I don't remember what the heck it was about. <laughs> Yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, let me think. What is... What is... What is are any movies? Uh, what are movies that are uh, out that are good right now? I don't know. I legitimately don't know. Um, I haven't been in touch with movies for a while. I know that um, there's a TV show that's coming out on Netflix called uh, um, Alice in Borderland. Uh, Alice in Bor... Yeah. Ima wa no kuni no aisu. Omens is good. What is omens? Omens! I don't know. I, I, I googled omens, but it doesn't say anything. Movie? Omens movie. The Omen? It's a 1976 film. Good omens. Good omens. Is a comedy series. I see, I see. A tale of bungling, the tale of a bung, the tale of the bungling of an Armageddon featuring an angel, a demon, and eleven, an eleven-year-old antichrist. What? And a doomsaying witch. What? <laughs> Just supernatural figures hanging out and having a good time. <laughs> One, um, you know, anime slash manga that I really liked was um, Saint no Onisan, which is which is a story about Jesus and Buddha just hanging out. It, that's literally the entire anime. The entire anime is just them dealing with like the woes of everyday life. How's it going for? It's a very British comedy. I don't know much about British comedy. Uh, but maybe this will be my introduction to British comedy. What did you join in on? British comedy. What? Yeah, um... Hmm, should I read fanfiction again today? No. <laughs> I did enough of that yesterday. I made you guys suffer enough. Uh, but did you guys see the short? Did you guys see the short uh, that I made? Oh, it didn't get that many views. Oh well. No, please no. <laughs> I, I do torture myself sometimes and it's fun. If you do anime, I've been watching the live action The Spoke Kishibe Rohan. But it's live action, so it's not anime. Wait, 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 that's not anime at all. That's literally the opposite of anime. <laughs> also, I don't know Kibishi no. Ki Kishibe Rohan. Rohan? Rohan. Ro Rohan. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's pronounced. Kishibe Rohan. Wa. Ugo kanai. What? Oh. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see how it's written. Oh, Rohan. Rohan kibishi. Ugo kanai. Oh, I see. It's a derivative off of JoJo. I see. What will I be doing for Christmas? Not much. I'll just be sitting around and sleeping. I don't have very big plans, honestly. Uh, you know, honestly, to me, every day is like more like a mini celebration. 
Uh, that sounds so like I'm. Uh, that sounds so like I'm preaching the gospel. Um, and thus God said every day should be a celebration, and thus He brought it into life. It's like yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but you know, I just like to try to have a nice day every day, and generally it doesn't work because my water is still not running. Phoenix Wright also has a stage play. Don't do this to me. Don't, don't do this to me. Don't, don't, don't make me feel more pain than I already feel. You're working on the speed paint and it'll take me to tomorrow. Oh, thank you so much, Kiyoma. I'm looking forward to it. Wait, are there Phoenix Wright fan fictions? Okay, sure. Phoenix. Phoenix X Miles Edgeworth. Sure. Uh, where's a Wattpad? Wrightworth stories. Perfect. Um, Star Crossed Lovers has 1.2 stars. Together forever, right worth. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, we need more. We need more text because I have to voice act it. Um, oh, this one's just called Right Worth. Uh, that one doesn't have very many stars. Um, drunk confession. Uh, let's see here. Oh, smut. This one's literally just called smut. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. I can't, why am I doing this? I, I don't care. Um, okay. Let me pull up some appropriate music. Hold on a second, please. Give me a moment, give me a moment. Perfect, okay. Um, romantic music, no copyright. Perfect, okay, we got this. How about this one? No, no, no. Well, you can fill the... Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, Blue Star. Uh, see you later. I hope to see you again sometime soon. Can you guys hear this? Can you guys hear this? Yes? All right, perfect. All right, this one's literally called Smutty Smut. <clears throat> Miles caught him at the sink. It was probably a good thing. Phoenix wasn't one to question because he was never exactly sure what it was about his new lover that set him off. There shouldn't have been anything enticing about a man even an attractive one, doing something so simple and commonplace as washing dishes. But as Miles watched him from his seat at the kitchen table, something about that spiky-haired defense attorney caught his attention. Something about the way his white cotton shirt dress 
dress shirt rumpled from a long day of work, formed subtle, round creases where it rolled to his elbows in the way the seam perfectly traced the long curve of his spine. Phoenix drew closer for a kiss, his grip on his partner faintly clinging. He hadn't expected Miles' sudden advances, and his face was already flushed. When Miles tried to kiss him again, he tilted his head, intercepting lips with chin so he could catch his breath. Under, undeterred, Miles um, instead spread his intended kisses along Phoenix's jaw along the side of his soft throat. Edgeworth. Phoenix squirmed faintly when Miles found a particularly sensitive patch of skin between the crook of his jaw. Can't I at least finish? No! Miles sucked possessively at Phoenix's neck, just as where he liked it the most. He could feel the aggression was enough to take, make Phoenix wilt, so on one hand he snapped around the sink. You didn't let me watch the news today, Phoenix. I couldn't help it! You look so cute lying on the sofa like that! Cute? Miles snorted in his ear. Yeah! Phoenix shifted his weight against the sink, his sink in in Miles' hair carefully. He made the noise again that was Miles was starting to that Miles was starting to adore. You're going to leave a mark! <laughs> Nothing a turtleneck wouldn't cover, Miles replied smartly. He was in a predatory mood that evening. Awful desperate! Aren't we? Maybe. He began unbuttoning Phoenix's shirt. You're the one that asked to stay over tonight. Phoenix's eyes darted down briefly to watch his um, progress before lifting them once more. Better than spending the night alone. I can't argue with that. <laughs> I am so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> so there you go you guys got your phoenix right um fan fiction in the style of objections <laughs> You might clip that. <laughs> Do, feel free to. That was fun, but gotta go. I mean, I should probably head out for dinner as well. So thanks so much everyone for hanging out with me today. Um, yeah, um, on my birthday specifically, and it was really, really fun. I'm glad that I had this little birthday present. Anyway, thanks so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Do you have any quests for me? And I'll see you all next time.